Mental Health Discrimination in the Workplace. This is PBL3 for the Social Justice and Adult Education course. It was created by Kaylee Curtis, Sandra DuPont, Janelle Francis, and John Philpott. Matt is a grade three elementary teacher working in a public elementary school in Durham Region. Matt has recently been struggling with mental health issues and decided to take time away from his current teaching position to seek help for coping strategies. Mac took three months off using his short-term disability coverage from his benefits package. When he returned to work, some of his colleagues asked him how his vacation was, while others questioned why he had to take time off instead of just working through the problem. Matt began to feel that his colleagues didn't believe that he was suffering from mental illness and that he just wanted some time off. Pause to review and consider these analysis questions while watching this video. Individuals of all ages, genders, and races face stigma and discrimination in the workplace when it comes to mental health issues. Mental health discrimination can happen in any place of employment. Mental illness is considered to be the invisible illness, making it difficult for people to understand. Many believe that mental illness is not real and is a choice. Those who have never experienced the pain of psychiatric illness, such as depression, do not understand the pain can be greater than that of a person suffering from a broken bone. Individuals can find seeking help difficult because of the stigma of mental illness and other barriers that get in the way. Stigma affects the person who is directly affected and those who care for and support them. Discrimination is described as the unjust treatment of people based on personal characteristics. According to CMP 2020, for quite some time, mental illness has been seen as a condition of a weak character, attention seeking behaviors, and a choice to act in ways that were against social norms. When these stigmas and biases are in the workplace, this results in individuals being stereotyped and discrimination often occurs. We chose to focus on discrimination in the workplace towards those with mental illness because we have all been touched by this topic in some way. We have close friends, family, and colleagues who have struggled with this issue. Some of us have even faced discrimination ourselves. It is imperative to spread awareness and learn how to support individuals with mental illness, not to isolate them and cause more stress and anxiety. On the Government of Canada webpage on mental illness, we found that 15% of Canadians use health services for mental illness, and close to 5.5 million Canadians received health services for a mental illness in 2016-2017. That's more than the population of British Columbia. These numbers show the importance of this topic and how important it is to discuss and overcome the stigma surrounding mental health. According to the Mental Health Commission of Canada 2019, 70% of people are concerned about psychological health and safety of their workplace. 14% don't think their workplace is healthy or safe at all. And 30% of short-term and long-term disability claims are attributed to mental health problems and illnesses. In 2011, Canadian employers lost $6 billion in productivity from absenteeism, presenteeism, and turnover. Hanois and Gabriel, 2000, state that mental health problems are among the most important contributors to the burden of disease and disability worldwide. Five out of ten leading causes of disability worldwide are mental health problems, end quote, page one. According to the Mental Health Commission of Canada 2019, 70% out of 10 people with serious mental illness are unemployed, and people with employment are healthier, have higher self-esteem, and higher standards for living. According to the Economic and Development Review Committee 2018, Canada ranks 27 out of 29 countries surveyed on public spending for disability-related issues and provides the second to lowest compensation and benefit levels. According to the American Psychiatric Association, many people are worried about discussing their mental health with their employers and fear losing their jobs or other job-related repercussions if they seek care for their mental illness. Listed above are only some of the negative effects of mental health that were more associated with the workplace. However, this list is much longer. According to Haynes and Gabriel, stress in the workplace can be harmful both physically and emotionally. When an employee feels supported in the workplace, this is reflected in their increased presence, well-being, and production. Notions of mental health at work tend to focus on the individual rather than the organization. 
as an employee, it is essential to feel empowered to advocate for and know your rights in the workplace while accessing resources that are available. So what do you do if you're being discriminated against? According to Steps to Justice, you should address it with the individual doing the bullying or harassment, document incidences, talk to your employer, file a grievance, find out if you can file a complaint to the Human Rights Tribunal, make a complaint to the Ministry of Labor, and seek legal advice. According to the Ontario Human Rights, Human Rights Mental Health Fact Sheet, quote, the Human Rights Code protects you from discrimination with respect to being fired, denied a job, or a promotion because of a mental health disability or addiction. You are also protected from harassment in your employment, end quote. Disability includes mental health disabilities and addictions. For example, an employer cannot fire a worker or deny them a job or promotion because of mental health issues or other disabilities. The employer has a duty to accommodate the worker's disability-related needs unless doing so would cause undue hardship based on significant costs or health and safety factors. Under Section 15, Subsection 1 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, quote, every individual is equal before and under the law and has the right to the equal protection, equal benefit of the law without discrimination, and in particular, without discrimination based on their race, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, sex, age, or mental or physical disability, end quote. Subsection 2 states that, quote, Subsection 1 does not preclude any law, program, or activity that has as its ob object the amelioration of conditions of disadvantaged individuals or groups, including those that are disadvantaged because of race, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, sex, age, or mental or physical disability, end quote. Organizations can create programs to provide employees with resources to recognize and get help with mental health issues that they are facing. There are plenty of resources out there to help. The Mental Health Commission of Canada, or MHCC, is mandated by the Canadian government to support all levels of government as well as organizations by providing tools, information, and support on mental health. They create a national standard set of guidelines, tools, and resources to guide organizations in promoting mental health. Their website supports the implementation of the standard through a variety of resources. The Employee Assistance Programs, or EAPs, are another option that many employers utilize. These are usually outsourced through third-party providers who offer 24-7 access to you and your family if you are in distress and need immediate support. Sessions are available by phone, video, email, and in person. Most employers cover the cost, but you may need to pay a co-pay or for additional sessions. Mental health issues cost Canadian businesses over $56 billion annually in medical expenses and lost productivity. However, workplace programs with a focus on using proactive steps to reduce stress, create wellness initiatives, and help leaders identify issues early can not only help improve employee mental health, but also help businesses. A Deloitte Insights analysis found that businesses see a return on investment of $1.62 for every $1 they spend on the mental health programs in the workplace. Provincial mental health resources include Connects Ontario. Connects Ontario offers mental health supports that are customized to caller-specific needs. Like the EAP program, they offer referrals in addition to education about addictions and mental health issues. HPSC, Ontario Mental Health Centre, is made up of a group of specialists with over two decades of combined experience in mental health treatment intervention and culturally appropriate psychotherapy modalities. Their entire approach is founded on evidence-based practices that cultivate inner vitality and bravery. The Canadian Mental Health Association offers treatment support and mental health education in addition to offering support to rural communities, housing, and community programs in the form of skill building workshops. eMentalHealth.ca offers a database with local and provincial publicly funded mental health services. They offer information sheets on a variety of issues along with screening tools and a search tool to help you find help based on your needs. Bell Let's Talk Day is an annual national campaign organized to spread awareness and help end the stigma around mental health. Each year, Bell Let's Talk runs this campaign to raise money for mental health supports across Canada through text messaging, phone calls, and social media posts. Bell Let's Talk is built on four pillars, anti-stigma, access to and care, research, and workplace leadership. 211 is a North American community and social service helpline allowing people to connect with a variety of community, social, 
health-related, and government services. 211 offers assistance under 19 topics, including mental health. Part of their strategic plan is to aid in creating a more efficient, flexible, and responsive public service delivery system for all Ontarians. Pause to review and consider these synthesis questions. Here are the references for this PBL. Thanks for watching.